Hey guys, it's Rachel Purcell doing my week four discussion video. Um, so for the first question, what terms were the most important? Um, I did emergency preparedness and they define this as pre-impact activities that establish a state of readiness to respond to extreme events that could affect the community. Um, then emergency response, and this was its main goals of protecting health and safety of emergency responders and the public. And they also said, like, to reduce damage to the city area and stuff of that nature. And preparedness, and it says it is best thought of as a process, a continuing sequence of analysis, plan, and plan development, and the acquisition of individual and team performance skills achieved through training, drills, exercise, and critique. Um, so pretty much all of these, like the whole um, unit seemed to be about um, just like being proactive rather than reactive. And so all of these words just being prepared and ready for what could possibly hit or what could not possibly hit, you know, um, seemed to be really important to me. Uh, number two, what was my muddiest point? Um, this is something that I feel like may seem really small and negligible, um, but it just seemed really weird that some of the articles said that people think that it's good to improvise during an emergency situation. Like, what's the point of having a plan when you could just improvise? And I know, like, for myself, my family doesn't have, like, an action plan if something were to happen. So, like, maybe I... And, you know, the pot calling the kettle black. But it seemed almost weird that people were saying, like, yeah, I might as well just improvise. If you're prepared and have stuff ready ahead of time, like, you don't have to do all that thinking on your toes right away. Now, granted, something can always come up. But, like, it's better to have a plan and just have to modify it and tweak it a little bit along the way rather than being like, oh, I have to literally, like, think of something and do it you know, at this moment in time. And then something that else that was confusing to me is it was talking about um, alerting systems or, yeah, alerting citizens and warning systems. And it was talking about um, how you might be able to reach into another jurisdiction. And it said that some places don't have public warning systems. And so, like, so if our county had a warning, but, like, the next county over didn't, like, we would have to get um, approval to tell those other people, but, like, is that really safe? Um, like, is it really safe to be, like, okay, it's fine that we don't have a warning system, um, so just, like, you know, you better, I hope that somebody tells you, and, like, yes, the news, you might hear stuff from the news, but, like, there are some people who don't have TV, internet, cable, um, how would they see all of that stuff? And then the third question, if you had to lead an in-person class, what is one question? Um, this question kind of came from that one article, was the mitigation and response planning in a bioterrorist attack. Um, it was based around, although it can be, or the question is, although it can be hard to tell what you would actually do in a theoretical situation, if you were a person in charge of giving an order to evacuate, do you think that you would hesitate in order to avoid panic if you can, or would it be better for you to just make announcements um, in that case? This question was based on the fact that I read that some of the people who are in charge of sending out alerts um, say that they wait because they don't want to cause panic if it's not necessary. But basically the question is just, do you think it's better to possibly cause unnecessary panic um, and know that your people will be safe, or is it better to just, like, wait around and really see what's going on? Um, so I think I rambled enough, and, yeah, I think that's all for this week. Thank you very much.